Hello YouTube. Let me first start out by saying that the systems I'm about to show you should probably never be used in a practical setting. This is more of a technical showcase versus something that's actually useful over other standard um, item sorter designs. This dustless design really is just to, to highlight more of a can you do it versus a should you do it type scenario. But I learned quite a few things along the way in making this design and I thought I'd share some of those with you first before I go over the two designs that I came up with here. So the first concept of this is sort of the, the block update detector, the, the bud setup for components like droppers, dispensers, and pistons. And it's easy to showcase that here through quasi-connectivity. If you power the block to above one of these items, it puts it into a soft powered state and any block update will then trigger it. So this is already budded. Hitting this note block will extend this piston. In the reverse, powering it off requires an update to then retract the piston. You can force it into a powered state and then have a single update to turn it off through something like this. So we are now powered on because it's giving it an update at the same time as it's being quasi uh, connected and this update would retract. Through a similar setup we can instead of you know leaving power on to these devices we can do a, 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 a QC power above a dropper and provide it an update below to get the same effect. So this note block will quasi connect here provide the update below we'll get a, a blip on this observer here and you heard the tick that it's on. This actually still leaves it in a budded state for the, the power off. So if I hit this note block, we won't hear a tick, but we will see um, a block update from this observer. So there, now it's powered off. We can power back on. We get the tick and the flash, another update to turn it off. You can actually also just keep turning it on this way because it'll actually provide it an update before it powers it back on and then buds it again. So this is an interesting setup. A dispenser works a little bit differently, especially if it's it's placing something that provides an update uh, to the block itself. So in here, I have a bucket of water. If we trigger it, you'll see that it spits the water out, but a second hit here will not trigger an update. It's because the, the block spitting or the, the update that it's providing actually shuts it down and it doesn't read a second signal. So we get one through the activation, there is no turn off. It's just reading the on and off basically at the same time in the same tick here. Now, that is one concept at play um, with the systems that I'm about to show you. Um, another is a comparator update detector um, that's going to be used in one of the two systems that I'll show you as well. And actually, the, the, comparator, the comparator actually sends block updates, so it's, it's interesting to see how this works. So I'll show you a couple ways in, in doing this. This is actually already powered on. I can do a quick uh, change to subtract mode for this comparator and it should, oh, it's probably already been triggered then. So I'll turn it off and then I'll change it out of subtract mode and it'll retract the piston. So we can power it on into subtract mode. It triggers the update simply by making this change and it, it does something in front of the block which updates the piston here. We can then also, we'll just give this another update. This comparator will send block updates when there is a change in signal strength as well. So you'll notice that I have the 181111 configuration. As soon as I throw this redstone dust into this um, soft powered piston, it'll update. And the same would happen if I took one out after. So it reads it up, it reads it down. Any change in signal strength will send a block update. So you could have this powered and have a system that puts the, um, the comparator into a cutted state. Uh, I wasn't supposed to show you that one yet. Let's show you this one here first. So this is now in its butted state. If we put this comparator on. So this is now in a cutted state and this is in a budded state. This can be this update. I'm going to put this into subtract mode. 
it's going to update the comparator and it's going to update the piston at the same time. Interesting, right? So you can have systems that work with a CUD and with a BUD at the same time. This one's a little bit more interesting. So let's just put that into reset. This one works a little bit more quickly because it's it's doing it all kind of in the same tick, but it'll hold on to the block because of the butted state. So you'll see here this system which goes you know one pulse to another pulse will read the comparator. This does not, but it'll still hold on to it. This just means we can move it pretty quickly. However, this actually still sends a block update even though you don't see it trigger. So if we put this into soft powered mode, when I hit this, this is still going to update. And this never comes on. So these are all the things that I've learned in, in making this design. And this was more of a challenge again than, than anything that was intended to be practical. But here is the first um, dustless item sorter. And it's not very big. I'm going to kill whatever this is, because I don't think that was actually supposed to be there. That was probably just me messing around before I recorded my video. So this, I believe, is the first of its kind, in that it is a hopper speed dustless item sorter. Dustless item sorters have existed. I saw a few designs uh, before you know, making out to create my own, uh, but none of them were hopper speed. And they were all quite a bit bigger than this, actually. So I, I used some of what I learned from making the box sorter in creating this design, and it kind of, it's pretty darn cool, actually. So what's happening is that for every activation, an item is being sent down here. These observers trigger the whole way down. So each slice is going to take um, a soft power to the dropper that is sitting here. These droppers are facing into a composter just to keep them silent with an item that can't go into the composter. And it's only going to take the update here if this also takes a strength, uh, a signal strength change. So these are all set up as your standard, standard item sorter filters below. I'm just doing 1 and 18, 1, 1, 1. These will, you know, you're never going to overflow from the top, but you might overflow from the bottom. So you might want to change this to 18, 1, 1, 1, 1 of the same item. Anyway, it doesn't really matter for this. Um, but if the slice accepts an item here, it's sending a block update here to the dropper that's been QC'd up above. And then it sends the signal down to the piston, which then unlocks below. So you have to send it from here. Uh, what I'll do is let's do a shulker shell. So this is empty and I already have one in there, so it should go right into it. There, and it went all the way down and there is our shulker shell. It's hard to see it in action here just because you know, we have to send it from there, but let's put um, uh, a dropper that has 16 of each item in here to be sorted. And we'll just place it right here, and you can see the whole thing in action now. So again, every slice is always activating these observers to soft power the dropper and will get updated by the change in signal strength when an item gets accepted. These observers read upwards. This actually puts the off signal. Remember over here I showed you where this one needs two. So there's on and off. By powering the rails above, that actually sets it off so you don't get a double pulse. And then it's just turning it back down to move the piston. So again, hopper speed, everything should be going through here. Yep. So if all worked well, we should have 16 of every item in these barrels. And 
that's it. And this is the unsorted here. Our yellow concrete is our unsorted item. So typically, these dropper chains create a little bit more lag than some redstone dust moving up and down. Uh, same with the pistons, actually, as well, too. So from a, you know, uh, a lag perspective, this actually doesn't do you much better. It might idle a little lower, especially if you have a large system of unlocked hoppers. Um, but it is still fairly close from my testing. And I'll show you some testing here in a moment. I did want to try and make a design that didn't use the dropper chain, uh, which I was also successful in doing. So what we're doing here is we're taking advantage of the on and off state of um, this dropper bud. So we're using both to detect um, a signal strength change from this, and it pulses over. We're using a CUD that gets updated at the same time, and it's sorting our items. So this one is a little bit more complex. There is no dropper chain to read the signal. We're relying on a pre-budded dropper, which then resets itself. It turns off the CUD and then resets the CUD. Got that? There's a lot of steps happening here that make this, that I find is probably a little bit more complicated than uh, your typical design. So again, this dropper is already in a budded state. When it gets an update from the change in signal strength in this hopper, this is going to activate. It's going to send power over into this block and down to this uh, note block, which will update the CUD. At the same time, it's powering over and down into this piston, which resets the CUD. And it's also moving this up here and putting it into its off budded state to be used on the next cycle. So yeah, there, there is a lot here. And I've got two different input setups for now. Right now, I'm just going to use the dropper, or sorry, the hopper input setup. So we should be able to see all the items pass through the hoppers above. And then I have an item aligner for a test afterwards. But let's put this in here and see how this goes. So there, you'll see the items are triggering the uh, bud resets above don't see any change in these comparators here, but you will see these ones switch on and off very quickly. So you'll see as it turns off, it's getting turned right back on. And our items should all be sorting in there. Let's see how we're doing here. Yep. And again, we're doing this at hopper speed. So you can see everything passing over. Right. We'll see. Everything should appear in this hopper. You saw how quickly the redstone dust got sucked out because that's getting pulled out right below. And we're almost done. But I can show you here now. We've got all our redstone dust, our diamonds, and so on. Everything right where it should be, our unsorted items up here. So I have a standard item sorter set over here. This one is overflow protected. And we're going to do some tests using tick warp to determine what the impact on usage is for each of these systems. So let's run through. Um, we're going to use a full dropper on each one. And I'm just going to set up my warp. 10,000 should be quick. So standard is point in this world, my benchmark is 0.33 milliseconds per tick. So let's put a box full of a full stack of each item here. And then that work. And that was really loud, I apologize. 0.37. So there was a 0.44 increase in average um, over that period of time, which wasn't terrible. Uh, let's try this system. This one's a little bit more laggy, 0.37, so barely anymore. But this system adds a little bit more to the lag too because of the constant. Oh, no, actually, I didn't even do that. Ha, ignore that. So this is just 
um, because there's two pistons here operating, it's a little bit more laggy and um, I don't think the hoppers itself are going to make a difference. I'd have to test that in a void world where it's just this system versus just that system. But either way, it's still the same benchmark. So 0 0.37, 0 0.38, and then let's just check our regular item sorter here. This one, of course, is silent, but that one is done, and 0.34. So this actually barely put any additional strain whereas this one jumped by 0 0.04 and this one jumped by 0 0.05. Let's do a quick comparison without the um, input systems here. We'll actually use the item aligners because you can't do it with this system obviously because you need to rely on the soft power here so you need the dropper chain. But these ones we will test. So this is the item aligner that I highlighted in one of my more recent videos. We'll put that there. Warp. Put our cross. And we are 0.5. So this adds a whole bunch of extra lag. However, in some cases it's needed. Your idle time might be down a little bit without those extra hoppers, actually. Let's see if it actually had any impact. Yeah, 0.32 instead of the 0.33. Minimal, it could even be a margin of error. But if you have a larger system with a lot of open hoppers, it will make a difference for sure. It just means that when it's operating, you got a little bit more lag to worry about. Um, so that went to 0.5, I think, right? Was that what we saw? 0.5, yeah. So let's try your typical item sorter and see what the impact is here. So this system is really what adds the, the extra lag to it, and there's about a 0 0.04 uh, millisecond per tick difference. So they're not, they're not terrible when it comes to lag, but this is still your better option because your signal strength changes on this dust only going up by one or two a piece. It's not really going to have any impact. You might end up with some light updates from the redstone torches, um, but, you know, in a well-lit spot or if you're using jack-o'-lanterns, that won't really have as much of an impact. Um, so th things to consider. Again, this isn't so much a, you should use these items or use these systems in your world. This is a showcase of what can be done technically to achieve the, the same type of um, system sorting as some of the standard items do or standard systems do. Anyway, I will share some Lightmatica designs for these two systems here, if anyone is interested in taking a look. And I think that's it for today. Thanks again, YouTube, and have a great day.